So Jim, how are there different ways that PER and PTCE could collaborate to improve patient care? Uh, you know, Phil, I love collaborating with PER, and I don't think every activity needs to be a, a collaboration with physician, nurse, and pharmacist. I think uh, there are certainly uh, activities that are focused on physician and diagnosis and treatment that have to be focused on, on that information, and, and pharmacists are involved downstream a little bit more, uh, but there are opportunities that we can bring pharmacists, nurses, physicians together when it's appropriate that they are part of that healthcare team, and when there's uh, information about um, adverse drug event uh, monitoring and uh, being able to address that uh, by the pharmacist, being able to coach them through uh, adherence issues. That's really important for that pharmacist to be involved. The other thing is the pharmacists need to be involved in hearing from the physician and from the nurse is what information uh, is important for uh, them to provide back to that health care provider and how should they do that. And oftentimes you hear that from the physician and from the nurse that they don't hear from the pharmacist as much as they, they can. And I think that's important. If we're going to look at the patient and treating the patient, uh, that pharmacist is important to provide information back to that physician and nurse. I think the future is good, and uh, of course it's good, right? Um, but I think that it's only going to get more and more challenging to treat patients and to diagnose them and everything else because you're going to have kind of two things happen. One is you have this new underlying condition yeah. and the situation with yeah. COVID that's under everything um, that you always have to consider. But also, you have a lot of people that haven't been in and out of the doctor's office now for about a year. Right. We're going to potentially get a wave of some pretty serious illness that physicians are going to need to address. And they're going to be seeing people maybe on video for the first time, or maybe it's the first time that they're seeing them in person and they're interacting with them. They're learning from it, trying to diagnose that in some cases, these cases much, might be much more severe than they would have been if they were diagnosed last April. And I'm not talking about just oncology. I'm talking about all different things. And what's even more difficult is now they're gonna to have to involve the healthcare team too. It's why different conversations like we're having now involving the pharmacist and the managed yeah. care professional are so important because all of a sudden, you know, we've, we've seen wave one of COVID, wave two of COVID. We're gonna see a wave one of post COVID diagnoses that are gonna come in that the healthcare team's gonna to need to figure out how to deal with. And I see pharmacists being involved in that, uh, being able to be the front lines, being able to uh, recommend uh, to go to the physician, uh, go to uh, the uh, NP or PA to, to get a diagnosis. I see the uh, foot traffic uh, opening up and going into stores or uh, pharmacists interacting with patients more and being able to recommend uh, how to get to a physician. And when they are challenged in getting that appointment with the physician's office, uh, being able to help uh, support the patient in some of the uh, uh, recommendations that they have, whether it's dosing, um, uh, management of adverse events, and being able to uh, overcome some of the uh, uh, issues that they have with their daily medication.